hey you guys and welcome back to my channel i have been gone a long time but good news i'm still pregnant um i am actually well into my third trimester i'm about to pop any day now i had done my first trimester video um so i was like well i need to finish i need to tell you guys how the second trimester was and of course how the third trimester is going so if you haven't seen the first video definitely check it out i will put a link down in the description box as well as it should be floating up above my head if you click on that little icon so let's talk second trimester if i had to compare my second trimester to my first trimester i would definitely prefer my first trimester i feel like it was payback time or something <laughs> because my second trimester went completely left. If you guys remember, like I said, my previous video, I was like, Ooh, I'll do this again. My first trimester was cool. It was nothing like psh, pregnancy is no big deal. Ciao. <laughs> I came to my senses in the second trimester. So my second trimester was all about physical stuff. Like it just got to me. It got to my body and it affected me in so many different ways. Like I stayed having headaches in the second trimester, uh, especially the first half of it. I don't know, they would just come on randomly. I didn't know really how to get rid of them. I don't know if it was cause I wasn't drinking enough water or not. I just know that I always got a lot of headaches. Same thing with heartburn, oh my God gosh i would wake up in the middle of the night and just randomly get it uh bananas became my best friend because i noticed that if i eat a banana i think it's because of the magnesium or something in it or magnesium i think the potassium in it or something helps with heartburn so when like whenever i would get heartburn like i don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning i would get up and eat a banana like we always had to have bananas in the house so that i could deal with my heartburn I would eat weird things and not weird in the sense of you know how people oh, craved pickles with peanut butter or, or something um no it's just there's things that i used to think were disgusting or i didn't like certain foods and then all of a sudden that i like i would just eat them like i remember um during my second trimester i was on a trip i went to visit a friend in california and on my way back in the airport i ordered like this blt sandwich with avocado and you guys i don't like blts i think they're gross and i don't understand the purpose because i don't feel like bacon is really a meat don't shoot me but i wouldn't put like bacon on a sandwich and be like yeah that's the meat of my sandwich <laughs> like um so i was really i was really disgusted with myself in terms of like the things that i would eat and i've eaten that um i've eaten that quite a few times getting sandwiches with avocado on it now because for some reason i that they just started sounding appealing to me i don't know my lady areas began to get really like my stomach and my boobs uh i think it was just because the skin was stretching or whatnot but used to get so 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 itchy really 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 itchy uh and a lot of people told me like don't scratch you're not supposed to scratch and i didn't i'm like why and people were like well you're gonna get i'm not even gonna tell you the crazy stuff that people told me because it's not gonna make sense it's fine um so at first i was like oh no 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 i'm not gonna scratch i'm not gonna scratch but that that soon changed and i explained why i changed why i stopped caring about scratching because I mean, it was itchy. It was so itchy. <laughs> um, because, of course, my belly started to expand, I would then get a lot of round ligament pain or whatnot, which wasn't... It didn't hurt too bad. It was just merely uncomfortable. Uh, but it was kind of cool to start to finally see my belly grow and get big and oh there's a person in there <laughs> uh, week 15 uh that was when i finally started to get my little flutters and i was like <sighs> that's when it became like really real like it is there is i have a human in there 
um and then it i would now and that is the point at which i was like more really into like let me talk to the baby because the baby can't hear me <laughs> because it's like oh i can feel you now like i know you're in there you're hanging out with me we have a lot of mommy and me dates huh um, but that was the, like the easy part of my second trimester i think um as i got towards the middle and the end just a lot of things started to come up like week after week after week um i made the first off in the uh i would say the middle of my second trimester i switched care i went from um being seen and preparing to give birth at a standard hospital to switching to a freestanding birth center um if you guys are interested i can talk about like what the differences are but basically if you are pregnant and you don't feel like your care team truly cares for you or is listening to your concerns switch care providers um and that's simply what i did there was just some for me the reason I felt like I had to switch was one, not only did I feel like, I felt like I was being made to feel silly for asking questions as if I was supposed to know certain answers to things. And it's like, dude, I've never had a baby before. Like, why would I know this? Or why would I think that this is normal? And I'm sorry, I want to carry my baby to term. So if something seems off or wrong, I'm going to call you. So I didn't, I mean, I didn't like that aspect of it, of again, trying to, or feeling like I was made to feel silly for asking questions, asking questions that I didn't know the answer to. Um, but then also, I didn't feel, I didn't feel like the hospital could offer me what I was going for. My goal is to have a natural meaning no intervention no meds water birth um and I felt like switching to the birth center I felt like they were more prepared and that was more common um at the birth center as compared to the hospital I remember in the first video I talked about I was crying over everything and this is second trimester is when a lot of stuff happened like I was where I um I had like kicked the kid by accident and I had uh spilled my fries and stuff you remember again if you watch the video I put up all the reasons that I had cried in the pregnancy it only got worse I just kept um crying about stuff also though my appetite came back normal um I could start eating uh like normal amounts of food I feel like I wasn't overeating um but it was just like it wasn't having to be as many small meals throughout the day um, and I don't know why that was because the baby was growing bigger I don't know for some reason like I had an appetite um it that that came back uh, my wedding rings didn't fit uh, closer to this, closer to the um, end though. Cause I like, I had, I guess one day, like my fingers were swollen or something. Cause one morning I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, my wedding ring doesn't fit. But then like two days later it was fitting again. So I don't know. <laughs> it, I, my body played a trick on me, but eventually it did grow. Obviously I did grow out of my wedding ring because now I wear my little dummy ring until I'm able to be back down to normal size. So this was in week 19. It was the night of, I guess technically it was the morning, New Year's Day. Because we had gone to church um, and when we came home, we like we stopped and got Jimmy John's. I know I'm not supposed to eat. I'm not supposed to eat what's the name meat and just, spare me. I ate the sandwich. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I wanted a Jimmy John sandwich, so I ate it. Anyway, um, afterwards though, I got sick and I don't. I don't know. I think it was something else. I don't think it was the sandwich, but I got these really weird flu-like symptoms where I got home. I wanted to eat the. No, I didn't finish the sandwich. I took like two or three bites and I told. D'Angelo, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm not feeling well. I had the shivers. Um, I had gotten my, 
my fe my temperature was slightly high. It wasn't a fever because when I called the nurse line, they had um, me take my temperature a couple times or whatnot to see. But I don't know if it was like some people said it was food poisoning. Other people said like the nurse line tried to tell me it was flu like symptoms. But again, this was when I was still with the hospital and it was like how sway how because like it literally lasted overnight like i got sick that morning i stayed in bed all new year's day i woke up the day after new year's and was starting to feel better and so i was able to go to work the following day so i don't know what it was they i'm like it couldn't be the flu how i mean you stay sick longer right yes like I, I don't know but i was like okay whatever but um d'angelo's got to say she thought that it might have been food po food poisoning i don't know but i got really really um really really sick that day so hip joint problems started um butt pain started to the point where i would literally cry from the pain like i don't know I think it was just the relaxing in my body like again the hormones of my body loosening up or whatnot and how the as the baby was continuing to grow just my body not used to carrying that much weight but it was I don't know like I I was constantly in pain constantly having to complain about it um like I would go to the doctor and eventually I started going to a chiropractor because it got out of hand to where like I would wake up in the middle of the night and like the hip that I was sleeping on would just be totally shot. Like I would have to like drag that leg, that leg that was connected to that hip to get to the bathroom and then I would switch and then I would wake up again and it'd be the same thing. And it was like something gotta give. And so I eventually went to a chiropractor and I was able to get that all worked out. Been a couple of times and it's done my body a whole heck of a lot of good. Uh, I plan on going at least maybe one more time before I give birth. Uh, so my body's all aligned and ready and baby's in perfect position. So we can go and get this show on the road and get him or her out of me. It was the flu-like symptoms they t or the all the symptoms that might have been food poison. But they told me it was flu-like symptoms. Then I went in because I told them, yo, I'm having this really heavy... Uh, I'm feeling really, really heavy, having a lot of off and on cramping. And then I've had um, some discharge that I don't think is normal. Um, some brown discharge or whatever. But they basically explained it away and said that maybe it was like because the, did they say the uterus, cervix, something in there. These little small blood vessels, it could have just been old blood that came out on like, Really? I, don't, I was just so unsatisfied with these answers that I was getting from the clinic. I don't know. It just didn't work for me, man. But I was like, okay, whatever, I guess. I went to my next like checkup appointment. Baby was fine. Heartbeat was fine. So baby's still growing on fine, uh, growing fine. So, and the baby's still here. So obviously it all worked out, but it, I just, I don't know. But during that appointment, th they told me you need to go for additional testing because we think that you have too much urobilin in your urine. Um, and it basically meant that my liver wasn't processing something like it was supposed to. And so, or maybe it had too much protein. I don't really know, man. Look it up. <laughs> but, um, they made me go for additional testing. It ended up not being anything, thank God. Um, but it was just like, oh my goodness, like what is going on? Again, it felt like every week it was, every time I went to a visit, it was something new. Uh, uh some weeks went on, whatnot. I switched, like I said, to the birth center. And the first thing that they addressed or were concerned about when I got there was that I had lost weight. Not a significant amount of weight, so I don't really know why they were tripping. Okay, I kind of get why they were tripping because to give birth at a free freestanding birth center you gotta be in like the perfect perfect health so i weighed 176 i weighed 176 before i got pregnant whatever <laughs> anyway um and then by the time i switched to the birth center which was at 23 weeks 
I had gone down to 171 pounds. So I had lost five pounds. Now, I don't know why they were so concerned about that. I joke to people like, the baby just ate my fat. Like, what is wrong with that? <laughs> like, the baby ate what needed to be gone from me. <laughs> I didn't feel like it was a bad thing, especially because the baby was growing and it appeared to be fine. It was fine at the ultrasound. <laughs> like when we did the anatomy scan, all the parts were there. Uh, I didn't see a big deal. But then they made me like go through this. Like I had to do a food diary and just, it, they were doing the most. They were doing the most, but I know, again, they want to make sure that I'm extremely, extremely low risk before they're like, yep, you can give birth here. So then um, the next thing that happened when I was at the birth center was that they said I had some type of, again, I think it's called a PVC, some type of heart, like, a, like my heart was skipping a beat or something. So then they referred me, I had to go to a cardiologist that was an extra... I was just maxed. I was paying all these bills. Like, oh my gosh, all these specialists that are going, doing all this extra testing. But basically, I was fine. I knew I was fine. I didn't know why I had to go. But I went. Well, I went because I wanted to be like, well, I need to be healthy for the baby. So, I went to that. I was fine. But it was pretty annoying to have to go do all of that extra um testing so then around week 24 it got ridiculous i couldn't sleep anymore like i would get insomnia i would be angry i would go to work mad because it'd be like i ain't had no sleep all night no i don't want to see clients today um but you know i had to push through and my sleep is still off and on but yeah i i started to get used to it i started to get used to it so, I mean, that was pretty much it for my second trimester. It was a roller coaster, a roller coaster of emotions. There was so much physical stuff that they kept being alarmed about and that I had to give attention to. Um, but it made for <laughs> an event full time. I don't know. It, 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 it wasn't the greatest thing to constantly have people tell you that something might be wrong. Um, especially when you are so anxious like me to make sure that oh my gosh I carry um, I carry my baby to turn so uh, yeah second trimester was the bad like first trimester was the good second trimester was the bad I don't I can tell you now that third trimester kind of got ugly <laughs> but um if you guys want to see that video definitely click uh on the link again once i have that video uploaded i will have that in the description box and then of course link it in this video once it is ready but yeah i am looking forward to <laughs> when the pregnancy is over <laughs> at this point but yeah so if you haven't already check out how my first trimester went and again check out third trimester video as well if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up like it with thumbs uh -huh, share it and of course if you have any questions or comments leave them below thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in my next video Bye. so dope come and roll with me so dope, love, life, and beauty, come along, come along, cause Kim is so dope.